For years now, internet woodworkers have been obsessed with low angle jack planes. And recently, I've kind of caught the bug myself. I started off by building my own. There's a whole video on it that you can check out. The build process was really interesting, and I'm happy with the final product. But as soon as it was done, I wanted to try it out against a real commercial plane. So I got this. This is the Stanley Sweetheart Low Angle Jack Plane. It's the most economical plane in this style, and it gets excellent reviews. I did a head-to-head -head comparison with mine. I've got a video on that too, but I'll save you the trouble. The Stanley destroyed mine in every way, and I want to recommend it to my viewers, but before I do that, I have to see not only is this plane good, but how does it stack up against the competition? So I grabbed this. This is the Tay Tools low angle bevel up jack plane. It looks a lot like the Stanley and they're in the same price range. So this is exactly the plane I want to be comparing. And these planes are all well and good, but I can't help but wonder, could we kick it up one more notch? You bet we can. Thanks to the generosity of one of my incredible patrons, we are also going to test out the low angle jack made by the premium plane maker, Veritas. That was weird. We'll start with the Stanley Low Angle Jack. Now I did a complete rundown of this plane just a couple weeks ago, so I'm only going to hit the highlights here. This plane makes an excellent jointer plane, a decent jack plane, and an outstanding shooting plane. It really just powers through those tough end grain cuts. And in addition to the plane's functionality, I also just think it's designed and manufactured really well. It's got a pleasing shape, it's very comfortable and easy to grip, it feels solid, nothing rattles, there's no obvious tool marks, and the finish on everything is excellent. In addition to all of this stuff, it's also got a couple of really thoughtful features. For instance, the adjuster is a Norris style, and that combines depth and lateral into a single piece of hardware. It's pretty easy to use, and it keeps things simple, keeps costs down. This plane also has an adjustable mouth. And that's really important in a tool that's supposed to do so many different things. A fine mouth helps you fight tear out and take fine cuts, and a wider mouth helps you take medium and rough cuts for stock preparation. I really did not want to like this plane when I first got it, and I don't like it. I love it. I think it's going to become part of my day-to-day -day kit and I want to recommend it to my viewers. But before I do that, I need to compare it to other planes, especially other planes in this price range. Luckily, there is only one other low angle jack in the same price range, and it's the one made by Tay Tools. And I was super excited when this thing showed up in the mail. Not only is it $150, which is a competitive price, it's also made by Soba Industries. That's the same company that makes the Grizzly smoothing plane that you've been seeing in a lot of my Woodwork for Humans videos recently. That little smoother is an outstanding value, and I expected a lot from this plane. And I was completely disappointed because this thing is a catastrophe. Let's start right away at the handle. Most of these low angle tools have a longer and straighter handle because you need a four finger grip. Your standard three finger grip won't work because there's nowhere to rest your index finger. You need to be able to put all four fingers around the tote. This tote was clearly just taken off of their standard number five plane. It's not meant for four fingers and it's uncomfortable to hold. It's also supposed to be some sort of hand rubbed finish on some tropical wood. It's supposed to be very high quality, but honestly, it feels cheap and chintzy. Another big problem is the lever cap. They've made it much too narrow, and it doesn't match up with the sides of the plane very well at all. That means you have to align it super carefully every time you set the plane up, and it's really easy to leave the lever cap cocked at some stupid angle. This is something they easily could have fixed in the design phase. Now I'm not trying to nitpick this thing, because the problems with it are really big. For instance, the adjuster is just a disaster. It is a very different design than the planes I've looked at so far. This is more like a block plane adjuster. It's got a brass screw with a wide lip, and it engages in a slot milled at the bottom of the blade. Now, this is a long-standing design that's been used successfully on lots of planes. I have no problems with it. The trouble is, on this model, it just 
literally doesn't work. When you turn it, the iron doesn't advance, and there's a terrible grinding sensation. When you disassemble the thing, you find all sorts of metal flakes inside the plane. At first I thought, oh, it's just left over from the factory. I'll clean those out, lube it up, and try it again. Well, I did all that stuff with the same results, and then I found more metal flakes inside the plane. What I figured out was this slot milled in the bottom of the iron, well, it wasn't machined correctly. There's a sharp lip on that thing, and it is just grinding away at that soft brass screw. It's going to chew it to dust in no time at all, and you can't move the iron. This problem is already a deal breaker, but on top of that, the mouth of the plane also doesn't open far enough. This right here is the maximum opening, about a sixteenth of an inch. Take a look at the Stanley. At maximum opening, it's got more than twice the space the Tay does. This is another thing that should have been fixed in the design phase. Finally, I don't really like the fit and finish of the plane very much. It's decent overall, and it's more traditional looking. That's going to appeal to some people who are turned off by the high-tech look of the Stanley or the Veritas. But unfortunately, the powder coat that they're using is already flaking off this plane in several spots, and I can see where they had to touch it up at the factory. It's really clear that it's just not going to hold up long term. What I find really frustrating about this plane is that for all the faults I just outlined, this thing's like 85% good. They got all the really difficult parts correct. They cast and designed the body really well. They picked a decent adjuster. Most of the things I'm talking about could be corrected without a ton of effort, but they didn't test it enough. I think this plane is essentially their beta version of the tool. It's not ready for prime time, and I do not recommend you buy it. Okay, there's nothing left to do now but look at the Veritas. Oh, I know what the problem is. Hold on just a second. Yep, I've got an infestation of tool fairies. They nest up in the rafters and they sing every time you bring a premium tool into your shop. When I first got my saw stop, it wouldn't shut up for weeks. And if you leave a block plane down under your workbench, they'll swipe it and leave a dime in its place. They're a real nuisance, but I'm going to spray everything down with WD-40. That'll get rid of them. Okay, where was I? Ah, the Veritas. Well, what am I going to say? It costs the most because it's the best. I ran this plane through all of the other tasks that I tried with the Stanley and with my homemade plane, and this was really better at all of them. It was excellent at jointing an edge, shooting end grain, and preparing the surfaces of boards. Now, the low angle of this plane does have a tendency to tear out, especially if the grain is rising against you. So when I tried it on the surface of this walnut board, the Veritas flattened the piece excellently, but it left a rough and uneven finish on the board. Once I flipped the board around and planed it again, it came out beautifully. I also tried it on this piece of oak, and this is a straight-grained, mild-mannered chunk of wood, but I still got this one spot of pronounced tear-out. Even though I was using an extremely fine setting and a very tight mouth, I couldn't get this one little area to go away until I broke out my little Stanley and just did that one spot. I had to flip the plane around and go from a couple different directions, but that's why you own a little smoother. None of these things is a knock on the Veritas. It just goes to show you that one plane isn't going to handle every single task in your shop. If you do hand work, you're going to need a handful of planes, even if this one is the centerpiece of your collection. I do have to give it credit for handling an incredibly figured piece of maple that I have that's challenging for most of my planes. This thing left a shimmery and beautiful surface better than I get with most of my vintage planes. So again, I've got to hand it to the Veritas for function. I also think this plane is really surprising for all the little refinements that Veritas built in. 
The overall feel is outstanding. It's heavy, but it never feels clunky in the hand. When you see me handling the Stanley and it's not on the wood, I'm often wobbling around like this because the center of gravity on that plane is kind of difficult to get your arm around. But this Veritas just feels like an extension of my hand. It's never wobbling around. It's always steady. And then the front knob is really great too. It has this really wide, flat design, which means you're not going to grab it in some stupid grip. I often grab my planes in a dumb way because I'm not thinking. The way this is designed, you pretty much have to grab it with your three strongest fingers in a really strong and ergonomic grip. That's a good refinement. This is also the heart of opening and closing the mouth. On the other low angle planes, you twist the knob, but then there's also a lever and yoke arrangement that actually moves the throat plate. The Veritas has gotten rid of all of that. All you do is unscrew the knob, move the plate forward or back, and screw the knob again. And then they've built in this tiny little set screw right in here, which limits how far back that throat plate can travel. So I have it set so that I can just push the throat plate back, and it stops at its minimum setting, but won't knock into the blade. That means that throat plate can't go crashing into your freshly honed edge and ruin it. And with that little screw, you can set that opening to be whatever you want. It's really a fantastic refinement. Now, when I first got the plane, I looked at this lever cap, this sort of T-shaped thing here, and I was like, oh God, these people at Veritas have got to be so modern and fancy. Can't they just make a normal looking lever cap like everybody else? I didn't think it had any function. But then I'm running the plane through all of its different tests and I'm getting up to using the shooting board. It's obvious to me that this depression right here in the side, that's where my thumb goes. So I went to shoot a piece of wood, I put my thumb there, and then my finger, oh my goodness, look at that. The lever cap is T-shaped because your fingers just naturally curl under there and it gives you a beautiful, solid grip. When you put it on the shooting board, it is an extremely smooth and ergonomic experience. They sell an auxiliary handle for this, like a wooden hot dog thing that you stick on there, but I don't see why. It's good to go the way it is. So, bottom line time. Do I recommend this plane? Well, I mean, shoot, yeah, if you've got the cash, buy the Cadillac, why not? For me, personally, it's just hard for me to justify throwing down that much money on a single hand tool. And then once I have thrown down the money, it makes me nervous. This plane is on loan to me from my patron, Ethan. Thanks, Ethan, you're a very generous fellow. But the fact that it's not mine and the fact that it costs so much money means that I have been tiptoeing around this thing for the last two weeks. I am terrified that I'm gonna knock it off the bench or ding it or snap the handle. All these things have happened to my other planes. I've got concrete floors down here. This is not an environment that's easy on tools. And I'm just saying this as a caution. If you have the money for this, you might get it and then find that you're a little bit scared to use it. And really, if you're scared to use your tool, what's the point? So at this point, I have been all over the low angle jack thing. I've done everything from try out the ultra high end premium all the way to making my own from scratch. What's the conclusion from all of this? Well, if you're going to buy one of these and you're on a budget, get the Stanley for sure. There's no question that the Veritas is the best of all of these planes, but the Stanley has about 80% of the functionality of the Veritas for half the price. It's a durable, well thought out tool. I've been using it for weeks and I can't find very many things to complain about. If you'd like to grab one of these, I have links to several different retailers down in the description, as well as links to the rest of these plants. Except for the Tay. I hate the Tay. Don't buy it. Now, I know some people are going to watch this video and say, well, this isn't the most complete shootout you could have done. There are other low angle jacks out there. You should have got them too. And listen, I can't do that because I am out of money. The Veritas was loaned to me by a very generous patron. But the rest of the planes on this table, I shelled out my own money for. There is a lot of cash sitting here. And the only reason that's possible is because I have patrons. They're the ones who give me the budget to do stuff like this. So when companies get in touch with me and offer to send me free tools, and that happens a fair bit, I can always say, no thanks. If I want to try one of your tools, I'm just going to suck it up and buy it. 
I can do that because of my patrons. They're a community of craftspeople that support me in making these videos. And maybe you'd like to be one of them. If you're interested, go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out all the early access rewards and benefits that I have just for my patrons. It's a great community and it's a lot of fun to be a part of. And another community that I super appreciate are my viewers on YouTube. Without viewers, none of this would be possible either. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week.